Hi, and uh, welcome to part two of uh, my uh, demo of uh, Cisco Software Defined Access using Zero Touch. Uh, I do want to apologize. When I actually started making the video, I didn't realize that I should probably break it up into chunks. So um, this will be part two. In part one, which I'll have linked below, uh, we covered uh, just a quick overview of Cisco DNA Center and, and uh, what I have set up in my environment. Uh, went through the topology uh, and showed you a little bit about the templates. And now we're going to actually jump into the plug and play or PNP section and uh, go through that, uh, finish it with uh, the provisioning step of provisioning our devices. And then uh, we'll get ready for part three, which will include land automation and actually building our fabric. So let's get started. So before I take you into the actual plug and play section in DNA Center, I'm going to show you uh, or I'm going to talk a little bit about how plug and play works with the Cisco device. Um, this is our network diagram again. Um, there, there are plenty of blog posts and, and articles and, and uh, tech notes about Cisco plug and play. It's been around for a few years. Um, almost every Cisco device nowadays actually supports it. Um, but basically, and, and I'll put some links down below uh, to with with some articles with some more details. But essentially, what will happen is when you when you um, take a, a new Cisco device out of the box, whether uh, it's an a access point or a switch or a router or in this case a WLC it will automatically try to get a network address. Um, the, the plug and play process on the device will create an SVI or a switch virtual interface in VLAN one. Um, and there are ways to override that to change the VLAN. But again, I won't get into that here, but uh, it'll put a, uh, it'll create an SVI for VLAN one by default. Uh, and then it'll put uh, an IP address DHCP command on that SVI and try to get uh, an IP address. It, 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 it Again, that's by default, almost every Cisco device will do that now. So um, what will happen there is, is I've got a, a DHCP server running on this core router, and I can't show it to you right now. Um, but what happens is uh, the, on top of giving the switch a new IP or an IP address on the network, uh, perhaps a DNS server and a domain name, you know, actually uh, one of the ways that you can direct the new device to a plug and play server such as Cisco DNA Center is to use option 43 in DHCP. So this core router has a DHCP configuration on it with a pool um, that actually has option 43 that sends the IP address of DNA Center down to the new device. Uh, and then what will happen is that new device will reach out to Cisco DNA Center uh, as a, a plug and play client. Uh, and then you can continue with the process. So the same thing happens with this 9800. Uh, the 9800 will come up on VLAN 1 with a DHCP command. It'll get an IP address from the core router with option 43. And then it'll automatically go to Cisco DNA Center because that's the IP address in option 43. Uh, and there are a couple other ways that uh, you can direct a PNP client to a PNP server. Uh, I, I won't cover those here, but they'll be covered in the blog post that I linked to below. So before we uh, can actually onboard the plug and play devices, we need to create uh, what's called a network profile. And the network profile is where we'll actually link the template, the onboarding template uh, to devices and to sites. So to do that, we go into the design section, we go over to network profiles, and we're going to create one here for switching because we are onboarding a switch. So uh, again, we're just going to give it a name. We're going to call this one just Bay Area Switches. Um, and here is where we can attach templates to uh, our network profile. So in this case, we're going to attach an onboarding template, which is the one that I showed you earlier. Um, so we're going to give it a device model uh, so that we can match up the templates that we've created with the device that we're onboarding. Uh, we, in this case, it's a Cisco Catalyst 9300 series switch. If we uh, uh, click over here, we can see our template, right? This was the onboarding template that I just showed you. Um, and then we're also going to create uh, or attach a day end template, which was the other template that I showed. And, and this template will actually be used when we do provisioning. So um, we create a network profile, give it a name, um, assign templates or, or choose our templates that we want to use within that profile. Uh, one would be the onboarding template and the other is going to be our, um, our reset script template that I, uh, that I showed you before. Um, so again, we're just going to pick the device type. If we pull down templates over here, we're going to see here prep for DA was that template that I showed you that uh, was just an EEM script to reset device. And then we click save. Now, the last thing you've got to do when you create a network profile is assign it to a site so that uh, DNA Center knows when you're onboarding uh, a device, uh, which sites uh, to link the templates from to which sites the devices are going to be provisioned to. So it, it makes probably makes more sense than the way I've, I've explained it. But essentially, we're going to assign 
uh, this network profile to our Bay Area. So any devices that are onboarded in the Bay Area will automatically be subject to the network profile and any templates that we can uh, that we connect. So we've just assigned it to seven sites, which is our San Jose, San Francisco buildings, as well as our floors, uh, everything under Bay Area, essentially. So now to get over to the plug and play section, uh, we just go into provision and plug and play. And what we'll see here is we've already got two devices uh, in our uh, acting as plug and play clients that C Cisco DNA Center is seeing. So um, these are the two devices that I showed you before. This is uh, the control plane border one device uh, and the WLC. So uh, again, these, these devices have a zero config on them. They're sitting at the, uh, the auto config prompt that I showed earlier. Um, you will also see a serial number here uh, by default. I've removed it obviously for security reasons. We can see that this is a, a wireless LAN controller. So DNA Center sees it as a WLC. Uh, these are the default device names on these devices. We can see the product ID is Cisco 9800, a C9300-48U. Uh, uh, we can see the IP addresses. These are the IP addresses that we got through DHCP, which I just described, uh, and that it's coming in through the network and also the last contact, right? So uh, this is it, right? This is the, the devices are, uh, they've gotten their DHCP address. They've gotten the IP address of the plug and play server through option 43 and they've connected to the plug and play server, in this case, Cisco DNA Center, and they're waiting to be onboarded. So we can, uh, we can go ahead and actually start that onboarding process now. We're actually gonna claim these devices. So uh, I'm actually gonna do both at once, and I'll kind of show you step-by-step step, uh, through each device on how uh, the parameters that are, that are uh, required to actually claim the device. So first thing I'm gonna do is click Actions and Claim. Um, I'm gonna give them each a unique name. So in this case, it'll be C9800 for the WLC. And I'm going to call this one CP border one uh, for that switch, the control plane and border. Um, again, we can see the serial numbers here. I wish that wasn't showing, but I'll leave it in there. Um, you can, uh, and again, the serial number is easy for you to match which devices you're trying to onboard. You should have a list of serial numbers of, of all devices that you're bringing onto your network, obviously. Um, we're going to assign both of these to the San Jose building 13 floor two uh, floor. Um, not for any particular reason other than that's where they're going to be in the fabric. So again, I just drilled, uh, click down, pull down this menu, uh, pick that same site for both of these devices. Uh, so I've given them both names and I've assigned them to both sites. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click next. And uh, the next uh, part of the configuration is, you'll see it's a, a little different. Uh, the configuration, the onboarding configuration for a switch is using that template, the template that I showed earlier, the template with those you know 10 or 12 commands in there that, that just provide basic connectivity. Um, onboarding for WLC is actually um, um, config module based. So we're actually gonna configure it through this GUI rather than using a CLI template that we'd use for a switch. So uh, let me show you those real quick. Um, before I get into that, the another option that you have with plug and play is to upgrade any new devices to your preferred version of iOS XE. So I don't have one defined in here. Um, if there was a uh, 17.3.2 release available right now, I could go ahead and choose it, uh, import it into Cisco DNA Center, and I'd be able to select it here as, a, as an image. And what'll happen is on top of configuring the device for uh, network connectivity and onboarding it, it'll actually go ahead and upgrade the device to my preferred iOS XE version. So that's a really, really important feature. If you've got a standard iOS, iOS XE version that you use in your network, uh, when you use plug and play, you can actually have DNA Center automatically up, upgrade your devices to that version, okay? Uh, and then of course, down here we see our template is already assigned and that's got our config, so we're good with that device. Now the WLC, again, like I mentioned, is a little bit different. Uh, WLC is, is done with, um, with model config, so if I click assign, you'll see here I've got some fields that I need to fill in. So the name is the one I already filled in on the last screen. Um, we're going to give us uh, we're going to give it a, an IP address of 100.64.1 or sorry .0.103. Uh, we're going to give it a standard uh, slash 24 subnet mask, and uh, our gateway address is 164.0.1. <coughs> so um, the the only uh, other two things that we need to configure here is we need to give it uh, to tell DNA Center which interface on the WLC we want to apply these uh, these parameters to. So what will happen is it'll configure this interface, and, and in my case, it's going to be Gigabit Ethernet 2 as a trunk, 
and then it's going to create an SVI matching this VLAN ID. So in my case, my VLAN ID is going to be 2000. So what will happen is it'll create an SVI for VLAN 2000 and it'll assign these IP addresses to it. So I click save, get that done. Um, click next. There are some other things you can do here uh, that I'm not going to cover, but there are you know, different templates and different images you can also assign to devices if you wanted to get more granular or more specific with some of your devices. So we get click next. Um, we're going to confirm here. This confirmation screen, if my template was a little more complex and it had var variable names in it, so if I wanted to fill out descriptions, custom descriptions or custom names or custom parameters in the, in the template, for each device, they would show up here. I could click on each device and any var variables that were in my template, I could fill in the values for those variables. So that's a little more advanced uh, with templates and that applies to both onboarding templates and day end templates, which would be applied later. So I'll go ahead and click next, we'll get to the summary screen. Uh, and we can see here is just a summary of the configurations that we've put in. <clears throat> if I wanted to look uh, at a preview of our configuration here, I could click it. I could see that it's going to push some credentials. Those are the credentials I defined earlier. Um, some device details, image details. If I was doing an image upgrade, um, a, a preview of the CLI. Again, this is that template that I showed earlier uh, and our network settings as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close that uh, and then go ahead and click claim. And this claim process really only takes a couple of minutes. Um, I'm not going to make you sit through it. So I'm going to end the video here uh, and uh, I'll pause the video here, I'm sorry. And uh, once it's claimed, and I'm, I'm going to time it, uh, and when I come back, I'll tell you exactly how long it takes. But it probably it takes only maybe two to three minutes. So um, be right back. I'll back as soon as they're claimed. All right. So uh, the devices are claimed. Um, that took two minutes. Um, just uh, just a shade over two minutes. And we can see here there's no devices showing under unclaimed. But if I click over here to provisioned. Uh, we can see that our devices are now onboarded and claimed um, and the onboarding process is complete. Um, so the next step is actually go to our device inventory and we can see here that the uh, both of the new devices are already in here. They're showing up as reachable and managed. Um, we've got a compliance feature that will be out in uh, DNA Center Cyclops as well. I won't get into that. Uh, but we can see that the IP address that we picked in our onboarding template that we used um, for our loopback address is updated here. So we're using that device or that IP address to manage our new switch. Uh, and the IP address that we gave during the WLC uh, onboarding process is also being used to manage the new switch. So we're not actually using the DHCP addresses anymore to manage these devices. So we can see here everything is ready to go and ready uh, in a ready state. And we're actually going to go ahead and, and provision our um, CP Border 1 device to get it ready for the next step, which is actually LAN automation. So um, I, you can't, Cisco DNA Center doesn't let you uh, provision two different types of devices at the same time. So in this case, we've got a WLC, a wireless LAN controller, and a switch. Um, we actually have to do those in two separate steps. So um, we'll, right now, we'll, we'll go ahead and provision our switch. Um, we'll leave the WLC for later when we get into the wireless section. So we just check the box. We go up to actions. We go to provision. And we're going to provision device. So again, this workflow is pretty simple. Um, if it's a, a new device that you've discovered, you would assign a site to it. But because we assigned the site uh, San Jose Building 13, Floor 2, during the onboarding process, we don't have to do that. So we just click Next. Um, advanced configuration is where the day N templates uh, are applied. So that other template that I showed you that has the um, the EEM script in it for resetting my devices, um, you can see here prep for DA is going to be applied. So again, that is taken from the network profile that we assigned to the Bay Area. And because this switch is being provisioned in the Bay Area, it will uh, get that template pushed to it. So if again, if I had variables in that template, I could also fill in those values here. Go ahead and click next. And we see here a summary of what settings are going to be pushed to the device. So Device provisioning generally will push your uh, AAA settings. So the settings that I defined in the uh, design section under network settings are going to be pushed here, which are our TACAC settings and our client authentication radius settings. Uh, the NTP server we had defined is also going to be pushed. Um, some other information here, DNS servers, domain name, uh, and DHCP servers will also be pushed to the device. So go ahead and click deploy. Um, it does let you uh, do a configuration preview where we can actually see what will be pushed. That is another new feature in Cisco DNA Center uh, Cyclops. Uh, we can schedule the provisioning for later, but we're going to do that now because we're making a video, right? So go ahead and click apply. 
Cisco DNA Center is going to go ahead and provision that device. That pr This provisioning process for a simple uh, network, for a simple config, really only takes a few seconds. Um, we can see here the task has been submitted. And within a few seconds, we should see a message saying that the device has been provisioned and we're going to be able to go to our next step. So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the video here uh, once the device gets provisioned. And then the next video is where we're going to go through LAN automation and the fabric creation. So this is, uh, uh, this is a, like I said, a good summary of, of uh, using plug and play to onboard a WLC and a switch. Um, and then also using the provision feature to push push our standard settings uh, to the device. So I'll see you uh, in the next video.